to lads, welcome to Oak Swamp and part 18 of the Leaf Array Roaster. Firstly this week I'd like to thank Chris Beesmore, Colin Jenkins, Mark Cannon, Steve Blacker and Sean Booth for going to the tip jar. And of course massive thanks to everyone who bought one of my lovely Oak Swamp t-shirts last week. Cheers guys, you're keeping this channel rolling. So this week's video, I didn't get as much done on the Leaf as I'd like to. But in true Oak Swamp style, I had fun getting there, so this is what happened. Tuesday. Okay, so I've been thinking about this fuel. And I'm going to move it from here. And I'm going to put it in the boot. Really, it wants to be gravity fed from the tank to make that pump work right. But if I can get the pump as low as possible down there. I found this was really noisy in here and I didn't really fancy having that in the cab with me. So I'm going to use a bit of this new copper for today. run the new fuel line through and I've also put the return in as well. I've nipped the return down the other side of this box, I've got one either side. I just start getting somewhere and then it pours down with rain. It's bleeding endless as rain. Okay, so both of the fuel lines run through here now and this doesn't fit anymore, which is okay because I'm kind of happy with that. So I'm going to cut this off across here and make this piece separately because when I took it out last time I realised how much of a pain it was getting this bit out each time and really the only bit I'd want to take out is a bit of the bottom if I wanted to get the brakes from this end or something. So I'm going to whop him off there. Okay so Putting it all back together, this little side one is too short now, so I'm going to remake him. So back to the Duralim. Duralim is aluminium mixed with copper in, and it makes it good for altitude and good for little brackets on your, on your vintage car. So this should have been a Spitfire really. So the war finished and they took this aluminium and instead of wasting it they made me some shelves for my kitchen out of this and you can see all the paint on the back where but you look at the alley underneath it's such nice aluminium and you can see the the primer on this side This piece alarmed me a bit really because I was steaming ahead, I think probably because of the weather, steaming ahead doing stuff to sort of get it get it moving while the sun was shining. But you go to fit properly and that's what I'm doing, I'm refitting everything. And I'm rethinking it as I go actually. There's certain things I want the clutch to be slightly different, so obviously I'm thinking about that. I'm gonna look into it anyway, but what are you gonna do? Make it up as you go along. Okay, I've reached a point on this that it's solid enough for my feet, so that's good enough for the minute, because it's not massively important at this stage of the game. Right, so what I'm going to do now, if you look at that throttle pedal, the, the hole doesn't line up, but the hole lines up out here. You see? That hole was originally the, the fuel regulator hole. I've used another one of these little brass handle exclusion or whatever, whatever they called. But what I want to do is this bracket 
I'm going to cut the bottom off and just lower it all by about an inch. I think that'd be about right. Most in the tackle. Right, I've re-tamped this up and that throttle's lovely now. Just like, look at the spring on it. <laughs> Pressure's right, and what this is doing, this is getting too much fuel on tick over. And I think it's leaking. I'm going to give this one more chance in a minute. I'm going to take this off and make sure the gasket's got loads of Vaseline on. Give it one more go, but if not, I'm going to have to get a, a gasket set for this. I did consider going the Weber route, because you can get, a, get an adapter done, and you can put a D-gas or a D-gav on there, and it'd be a lot easier to get parts from there, but... This afternoon I uh, give the carb a good clean out. I think it's about right now, so what I'm doing now, this air filter, this is the air filter, I think it came off the comma, but this saucepan fits directly on top, so what I'm gonna do, <laughs> drill a hole for the carb in the bottom, put a hole in the top. There you go, that fits on there a treat. getting there now. Sunday. You find me heading down to Littlehampton, which is a little town just down the coast from me, and I'm going to collect some wire wheels. I was watching a set of four wire wheels on eBay this week, and I, I put a five quid bid on just to remind myself, and I won them, so I'm going down. Fortunately, the bloke was a dude, and he was happy to sell them for a fiver. Also, I'm popping up to see a dude called Warren Cole. If you're on the Oak Swamp Rats page on Facebook, you'll probably know him. He's got the little car, Alan, he's just finished, and he's building a board racer at the moment. So I'm interested to see those two. Anyway, onward. Oh, so there you are. Look at that one. It's got broccoli on it. I'm not. But that is in pretty good nick. Okay, so I've landed, had a cup of tea. Here's Warren. Hi all. And Amanda. Hello. And we're going to go and look in his garage. Come on. Welcome to the garage. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the workshop. How exciting is this? This is Alan here. Tell us all about Alan Mush. Well, that's how he was in America. Basically used as a planter. Really? Yeah, yeah, and, and I've been in contact with the with the guy who owned that, his daughter, and she's been talking to me on the internet. So, what actually is the car? It's a standard eight. A standard eight. Standard eight. It's a it's a what I call a special body standard eight. Gotcha. So, and what's the body from? Uh, it's just hand built. Just is it? Hand, hand built in America by a guy called he was called Mr. Hawkins. Uh, and he was big into his Austin Bantams. So when it came here, it was a case of it came as a pile of bits, you know, as it were. It was just a case of salvaging what we had and making what we didn't have, you know, as as we all do. Are you going to open the bonnet up? Oh, for I us? Can certainly. If you don't know what's in here, you might be quite surprised. A little motor guzzy V50 Mark II. So uh, how many cc's? 500. 500. That's so cute in there, isn't it? Yeah, it fits. It does fit really well, and we were really surprised. No, don't listen. You'll go. It should go pretty quick. Oh, it's like a, a, a mixer engine, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's almost exactly the same. Yeah. Look at that. That's really cool, man. It's just going to be used for shows, just driving around, yeah, pit just, bike. Yeah, just be that sort.
<laughs> Can I just tell you while it's quiet, it looks cool as fuck, man. Does it? It's really cool. So what, what are your plans for her now? For him? Just just to use. Just to use it, you know, yeah. get it out. You're going to put it on the road? Yeah, definitely going to be on the road. Well, there's Alan. I'm sure Warren's going to keep us updated as you carry on yeah, with this. Yeah, definitely, way, mate. Definitely. Yeah, I'd like to get it um, to a point where we can actually see it moving properly. Yeah. Lovely car, though. But this isn't it. There's more. This is a teaser shot. Little teaser. So tell us all about this one then, Mush. Um, well, this is something I've just acquired. 1927T, as I said before, turtle deck. Um, raced at Pendine three years, 73 mile an hour on the sand. It's a Model A engine, twin Strongbergs, Riley manifold, four into two into one exhaust, eight plug head, Mallory ignition. I think I said light and flywheel, uh, but I don't know anything about cam. I, I should imagine they might have done something with it. Are we going out? Go out? Yeah, fucking right. Sounds fruity, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, good last man. This is a bit of deal, this is. Is it? Honestly, I didn't expect it to go like that. Oh, really? This this thing flies for a four-banger. Yeah. It absolutely flies. Well, well, I always wanted a V8. I wanted a flathead V8. But when I saw it to a few of the guys, they said, if one of these is set up properly, he said that that'll be better than a standard V8. It just, it, it's like it's a modern engine. Yeah. Isn't it? This is what the Leafs going to be like. Yeah, yeah that'd, just, be, that'd be cool. Yeah. yeah, but you've got a bit, a bit more of a modern engine, haven't you? Which well, only, only a lot more. What year would that engine be? 20s? Yeah, it'll be it? Yeah, what's the Model A? It was about 29 to 31, wasn't it? So, yeah, it's fantastic, Warren. Thanks for taking us. Oh, no worries, mate. No, pleasure. It's We've pleasure. got one more to do, and that's right behind him. Well, back in uh, 2015, I wanted a British car on air ride with a bomber interior. And I'd had one of these before when I was 18. Yeah. So I thought, let's go for a coupe. This one, this one came up. Banger Racer Boys wanted it and the mm. bloke held out for someone that actually wanted to restore it um, and that was me. Wheels? They're a Dunlop replica of a D-type if you imagine what the other oh, yeah, yeah. used to have. They're billet aluminium, three piece, bolted from the inside, what they call classic build, so you don't see any of the bolts where they bolt them all together. Mate, oh the seats are great aren't they? Yeah, they're, 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 do you believe it or not they're an eBay, a guy and a bloke from Poland made them. Really? Yeah and he um, he made all the aluminium, we made all the panels for it. It's not only the front seats, but the back seats are bombers too. How cool are they? Blimey, that's clean, isn't it? Yeah. It sort of had about a four year restoration, really, if you take it in its actual terms. Thanks a lot, Warren. Thanks for showing me all around your you're, stuff, mate. You're more than welcome, Brian. <laughs> that's what it's got to be it's Monday dinner time and I have a list first job is a little bit to be cut out of the chassis so I can get a speedo cable in I've got a 
solder the fuel tank up, which I'm not doing today. Brakes, I need to make one rod up for the front, adjust all the others up, clean them up and grease them up. And I'm also going to have to put a brake light switch in. With the wires, the brake light and an ignition light and a horn. The rad, I'm going to put some rad weld on. I've got to weld up the drag link. Do the doors, weld up the body. I'm hoping I'm going to get all of that done this week. And I think I probably will. I'm going to have to do a bit of running around for bits and bobs, but, um, no, good. Onward. A little bit of searching and I found the fella I was looking for. Now this is a brake light switch. When you have cable brakes, you have this sort of brake light switch. And basically, if you see them two pins, this just pulls forward, it makes a contact and that's it. I've got to attach this via a spring to one of the brake rods and there you go, Bob's your uncle. Okay, I found a spring for it and I found a place for this to go. So basically, I've got to just make a little flat bracket that comes off so it can sit on the edge of the chassis. So I'm going to just knock one up. Scooby dooby doo, where are you? There it is up in there. And now the spring's gonna come and I'm gonna make a little bracket that slips onto there. Right, it don't get any simpler and easier to do than that. So if I pinch that through and then just hook it round, that little bit round the edge. <coughs> it's pretty easy to get to because it's down here. Right, I've took the lamp off. This old lovely Edwardian lamp bracket, you see. <laughs> what I'm going to do is, because the cable's coming straight from here, I'm going to put a hole just in here, so I'm going to have to drill it from behind. Tell if it works. Yeah, baby. I ordered some trailer cable, and uh, it arrived. It looked more like Cat5 cable. It was really skinny, so I decided not to use it. Go with single strands. All in brown, it'll be all right. Really, really windy today and very cold. <laughs> Scooby fucking dooby doo. To continue with this tank, I've decided to make all the bits again because I wasn't really happy with this and the gaps were too big. I was thinking I'd be welding it so. What I've got to do is go from there to about here. So what I need is an elbow. I don't really have any tube knocking around like that, but I know a man who does. So let's go and see him. Hey! Hello. Hi, Moose. How are you doing? going on with this one then? Is this a custom? Going to Australia but they've just realised they won't let it in the country. <laughs> they won't? No. Nah. Why ever not? <laughs> I don't know what to do. I don't know. Have a rake finder. <laughs> they pull you in off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They bang it on your fork. Fucking hell, man. That's his. That's mine. I was going to say if it's <laughs> yours. It looks a bit of you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Good one. Got it. That's cool, man. Is that your that runner? More, yeah. That was a chain that made that pattern. Man. What, that it. pattern there? Yeah, what was it? Just flat, I thought. The chain was just touching it, yeah. And I liked it so much, I turned the tire and I get it on the other side and it won't do it. <laughs> nice pattern, isn't it? It's cool, isn't it? Itself. This here is the front brake, right? That's your front back brake. It's a front and back brake. This one here is a throttle. 
Yeah, and that's your back back brake. And that's the back back brake, and the clutch is Down on, yeah. this side, and the shifter's here. That's it, yeah, yeah. Does it feel like you're playing the piano when you're driving along? Yeah, it's doing that, isn't it? <laughs> Oil gate. What motor is this in this one? That's a 1450 twin cam out of a heritage soft tail. Is it stock, is it? Yeah, it's stock. Just got different carpets on the end. Do you ever hop them up? No. It's too scary. It really? <laughs> I do 100 mile an hour and that's more than enough for me. I'd say. Me and Si have been talking proportions this morning and uh, you can see he's got it right. Battery might be flat, it's okay. It might go. What size is that rear? That's a 360. 360. Oh. Sorry. Look at that. Always treated lovely by Simon. Do I need any fire extinguishers is the question. See ya mate. Well, cheers brother. See you later boy. I'll be seeing you soon. You're going to be seeing a bit more of Si later uh, when the next project starts. If I can drag him away from these alleys. <laughs> afternoon dentist extraction joy mm, that was fun feels like someone smacked me in the gob now but that tooth had a bit too much patina we had to go and pull the tooth out how much do you reckon pull one tooth out 210 pounds fuck me my lips feel weird can't eat, can't drink, can't do anything fucking hot, can't sit down, can't stand up, clap hands, shall thank you lord, or any of that nonsense. I'm gonna have to just eat soft stuff and cold cups of tea. Got home from the dentist on Tuesday, really knackered, so I went to bed. Got up the next morning, half an hour, went back to bed, slept till this morning, and it's Thursday now. What the hell? So put the ignition light in lines. Hopefully this is going to fire up the alternator, but I don't think that alternator is going to be much cop anyway, to be fair. Well, unbelievably, that alternator is all right. The choke cable arrived. To put this choke in, I'm going to have to make a bigger one of these, so. I think what I'm going to do is take it right from there, right to the edge. Right, I'm going to go 190, I'm cutting up the list. choking this choke cable it's only got to go to here so I'm just gonna take it above the top of that one okay with that through there I just got to cut this off here as with everything I order on eBay it's not a, it's not what I expected it's this is a multi strand it's not a stiff bit of wire like use usual choke cables are but eBay isn't any good anymore look at that bit just snap clean off. <laughs> I was just pushing the cable through and it snapped off. Piece of shit. As that thing broke, I've just run it straight through like this. It's just going straight through like the throttle cable now. It's doing its thing. Friday morning and it is absolutely lovely out there. So today I've got to catch up with all the stuff I've missed all week because I've just 
I just seem to have been busy all week, what with the dentist and all that nonsense. But the first thing I'm going to do this morning, I think, I'm going to get them right off the ground. I'm going to take all the drums off, check out what the brakes are like. I've had a couple of them off and they all look good, but I'm going to just take them off, give them a good clean up, put them back and adjust them up. It's exactly the same as the rat leaking out the front. It's obviously got one of those spiral things on it. <laughs> Still got loads of meat on. Hopefully nice and clean in there as well. I think they're new, new liners look. Some wildlife in there. That's not bad. I can only assume this was a low mileage car. Everything is in such good nick. I suppose back in the day these cars never did big miles anyway, the roads were terrible. And it seems once the engine fails, you know, it's got all them Babbitt bearings in which you can't do yourself. Once they go, the car gets stood up, the body rots away and you're left with a really good chassis and I was lucky to find this one I think especially with the V5 all in place and that now you see if you'd have had juice brakes what would have happened is the cylinders would have gone and all all the hydraulic fluid would have gone all over your shoes so it would have killed your shoes everything would be covered in oil and they wouldn't work you can see this works see that Not Lynn sneezing, there's a woodpecker over there. Yeah. He's flat out, he's digging a big hole. There's a particular tree over there they go for every year. Must be soft, or have loads of bugs on it. Give these a little live one. Keeping out of the way of this stuff is... I'm not sure if these are asbestos or not, but I'm not taking the chance of getting anywhere near it. Right, there we go. The adjustment on these is by this big, big square, so I'm going to see which way that goes and take this up until it nips. Got a brand new combine have, sir, and I'll give you the key. There it goes. I got 40 acres, and you got 23. <laughs> it's got a primer. This has been renovated, man. That tiny bit noisy, but he's not moving. Right, I'm going to whip this side off as well. You can hear it, can't you? Okay, on this one, everything looks good again, but it's got a slight oil leak down the bottom there. The bearings feel right. So I think it's coming from behind this piece. You know, there must be a, look, you can see, see the oil in here. I'm gonna have to do a bit of reading on how to remove these half shafts, and um, I think I'm gonna leave it up on its wheels for a minute. That'll help me lose a few more teeth. I do like the look of cars with the wheels off. After a lot of searching for adapters for the temperature sender, the temperature sender's got a got a three eight thread there going to the bulb. Now it's sixteen mil going into the leaf inlet manifold. 
I looked online and there, there was no nothing right and then this came up for a couple of quid but it just needs half a mil taken out the middle of it so I'm hoping I can do that I hope I don't mess it up Okay, the stat comes through the hole and then stops at the top, so it must have a shoulder on, so I've got to drill that out. Yeah, that worked a treat, that went straight up there. So now that'll go up to there. Yeah, baby. Right, to seal it, I'm using some of this stuff, because this is absolutely bang on. You put this on, it's not going to leak. Oh, <laughs> I'll be excited there. It won't leak with this, and it goes off nice and solid. But as like with all Loctite, when you want to get it undone, you just give it some, some grief. Just looking at this thermostat, and it's no good. Look, all the, all the rubbers are hanging out, so I need to get another one of those. Just as well, I took them off, really, because thermostat's really important. People underestimate it. The amount of work it does. The AMG just turned up. Hello, mate. Hello. This is Jim. How are you doing? Good, Good doing, to mate. see you. Oh, this is the V8 one, eh? This is the Empire. Yes, it is. 4.6 V8. 4.6? Yes, Hemi and fiddled around with since 1988. What axle is it? It's a MG Ganjo axle, but with some Mustang internals. Oh. Stainless steel half shaft. And various other bits. This on the back. Oh, oh yes, this yeah. brake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's it run? Uh, very well indeed. We'll go for a little blitz in it later. Straight as a die, isn't it? Yes, yes. I do love the big scoop on it. Well, that was because we couldn't get enough air into the Edelbrock for a standard bonnet. Yeah. We tried ducting it, it still wouldn't work. And we ran it without a bonnet, which is not socially acceptable these days, but it did go much quicker, so we thought we'd make some holes in the bonnet, it would go quicker. Yeah. Needs to breathe, don't they? Absolutely. Oh, that looks nice. I like them rockers. Did you get them made? Yes. Yes, in Wales. Yeah, they look cool as you like, don't they? Look where the headers go. <laughs> they, they go through the wings and outside. They are straight throughs with um, quadruple jet X on it to put a lid on it to about 3,500 RPM. Excellent. Beyond that, they are totally uh, straight through. Now the reason Jim is here is he's been making boat covers for how many decades, years? Decades. Decades. Yeah. And Start, you started as a cell maker, and when that became digitised, I needed to do a ruler and string business. And uh, cover making is ruler and string. No need for knowledge of aerodynamics to see if the cover fits. And he's measuring up the leaf for a tonne because I think it needs it, doesn't it? It'd be nice to keep water out of it. Yeah. Stick it along this chosen line here where the fittings are, which may or may not, may or may not have been tonneau oh, fittings. This one? Yep. We're going to do the same over here. Again, down beyond? Yeah, uh, yeah, just, just br br bracket, bring it down here and bring it around the curve. Yeah. At about 45 degrees as you go down. I have effectively retired due to stroke and hill health. And I should have done it years ago. I got to a point where push it, I... Thought... Push it down as you go. So what we've got on here is double-sided tape and we're now about to put the template cloth on. This is exciting, I've never done this before. We do a, a one-piece pattern in full size and then any problems are knocked out of it. So stop. It's 
It's no good ringing Jim up now because he's retired now, Jim, haven't you? Yes, I have. How did I manage to pull you out of retirement to come round and, and, and visit my ratty roaster? Well, as a fellow car enthusiast and lover of old scrap, uh, as in that, obviously uh, I made an exception for you, sir. Thank you very much. Jim's got a whole host of cars. You've probably seen quite a few of them on the show already. It's a good collection and they're all as clean as that. As clean as a whistle. We're Tony Dunn. Look at that. Looks like a completely different car. So to get the outline shaped, I simply draw along the apex lines like that. So now we're putting in the shape. And the way to put the shape in is to do a fold where it comes down perpendicular from the edge and then mark it off like so. So you have a start point and oh, an end so point. So you know is that, oh, That's how we absorb oh, the shape. clever. Now that thing, Are you that... watching this, you lot? <laughs> <laughs> so what Jim's doing here is, so when this folds back, when this is opened up, you so can nice. see exactly where the fold was. Very smart, very smart. So again, we have the wheel. We'll put a reinforcing piece over the wheel because that will have some load on it. There'll be a zipper here running along so that piece then can go behind the seat or yeah. sit on it whichever the case may be and this bit here will be held down by the weight of the fabric aft and it'll do, give a tension there. If need be on strange shaped cars we have at times put a tag and a small elastic to put this down to keep it in tension so and it doesn't it, flutter. Put it to the floor yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. <laughs> there we are. Well, I haven't washed these jeans for three months. Right, it's leather. They're green. So basically, you can cut out here. So we spin her up. Get some oil pressure going. And then... Thing is animal for an MG. He is absolutely flooring that. Fair play to him. I never thought he had it in him. My adrenaline's up now. I've not been in an MG quite like that before. <laughs> Thanks, mate. That was brilliant fun. Oh yeah, that's what we were doing. I forgot all about this. Okay. Thanks a lot, Jim. Okay, my pleasure. And we shall do it again. And so you're gonna go away and see what you can make with it. It'll be fine. <laughs> Saturday morning, I've got a visitor, Mr. Chris Beadsmore. Hello there, how's it going? Chris also has a channel, going by the name of? The Bracket Factory. And Chris is doing specials like me, and you also yeah. do motorbikes as well, Motorbikes. Don't you, Anything with an engine, basically. Anything with an engine, a petrol engine. I can't wait to go up to his house, which is going to be next week, because he has loads of shit, haven't he? Yeah, loads of shit, yeah. We can uncover it all and have a good look. Lovely. And this is Nat. Hello. <laughs> and what Chris is down for is, he's kindly helping me out by sorting my tank out, aren't you, Chris? I'll give him my best shot, that's for sure. He hasn't seen it yet. <laughs> <laughs> this edge is fine. This edge is fine. This edge is quite close to this, this solder joint. I might might weld a, f a flange on underneath and just 
TIG along the seam here, fix that, and I've got something decent to weld to along this edge. Yeah, yeah. My uh, consideration when I was just going to uh, MIG it was to put like a half inch flange all the way down with a tap and then weld the three together. Right, I see, yeah, so you don't blow a hole straight Look, yeah, through. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I'm crap at welding, yeah, yeah. aren't I? What do you think, Nat? Absolutely. I think, I think, Nat, this could be your apprentice piece. <laughs> you could you could learn to weld on you this. Could. If you can weld yeah. this, you can fucking weld I was anything. Say, I might yeah. If you can weld that, on. I'll take my hat off. <laughs> <laughs> it's off already. Yeah. Let's take it back to the bracket factory and see uh, what, what magic uh, can be worked or otherwise. This is a reassurance. When you want something done rough, right? I'm there, man. Yeah. I'm there waiting. <laughs> I want this one next. <laughs> So Chris is going to take Nat for a bit of a drive out on the rat. He looks really happy. <laughs> Here he comes. I bet he's smiling. I bet you any money. Told you, you can't help but smile when you go in the rat. What do you reckon, dude? It's awesome. Do you like it? It's awesome, yeah. you got to build one like this I now, mate. Chris has got a wonderful rag, do they call it? It's a rag, yeah, a rag. Austin 7 Special, yeah. It hands really well. And the steering's lovely. Steering. Steering's precise, isn't it? Steering's... Cheers, Chris. Cheers, buddy. Take it easy, I'll mate. see you soon. Happy Thanks Austin. very much. Lovely to meet you, Nat. Cheers. See you next time. Cheers, Cheers. bye bye. Cheers. Well, there you are, that was lovely of Chris to offer to take and do that tank for me, fair play to him. And what it does, it leaves me open to get on with these other bits and pieces now. So I'm going to whip these wheel bearings off, get these over to the bearing shop and get some new bearings for that. There's a few other little jobs, but nothing really major. I'm going to make a new exhaust next week as well. I've just got to get it good enough to pass an MOT. But anyway, that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, please leave me a like and a comment. If you're not subscribed at this point, make sure you hit the old subscribe button. If you fancy helping me out and supporting the channel, please go over to the tip jar or better still, grab one of these shirts. Anyway, massive thanks to Jim Hammond for all the cool tunes and thanks for watching. I'll catch you dudes next time. Hang loose. <laughs>